Good morning. Oh, about fell. Good morning, flare fishing fam. We are going bass fishing today at one of my all time favorite lakes back in Nebraska, Chasing Spring Nebraska Brutes. But I gotta show you something about the new Tundra, okay? So if you guys don't know, got the new truck, got the lift on it, got the BF Goodrich tires on it. If you guys actually want those, I'll link those down below. They're, they're pretty sick. And uh, But I finally got the last modification done to the truck. Check it out. Right here, got the, uh, got the Lear cover on it right here. This thing basically slides back and forth. I'm not gonna show you just because I don't wanna take it all apart, but like you just, it slides and then you bring it back. Keeps your stuff protected from all the burglars and uh, and all that good stuff. So got that on. I just want to show you guys. I know a lot of you guys have been asking what other mods are going to be doing to this. That's basically it. You haven't seen the full the full truck. That's what she looks like. We got a lift on her. Again, the BFGs, some wheels, tent, side steps, all the all the good stuff. The Tundra is looking good. But today, today, more importantly, we are going fishing. Maiden voyage of the new newly revamped uh, tin pounder and uh, I, if you guys don't remember Toyo to actually helped me out with that build so huge thanks to those guys for supporting me and uh, and actually supporting this video right here so we're gonna put this boat to the test as you can see we got a little bit of cloudiness going on behind me I believe there's a storm rolling in here pretty soon couple hours maybe it's been really warm here in Nebraska though lately which is good we need the warm weather for the fish I've heard the water temperatures are like in the 50s mid 50s or so so we might be throwing jerk baits lipless chatter baits, square bills, jigs, net rigs, pretty much all that good stuff, but I'm excited. There's also a northern pike in this lake, so I'm really hoping to catch a giant pike. I don't have a nest, so that would be pretty exciting stuff. Anyways, I'm gonna shut up. Let's get to fishing. I don't know if throwing a teeny little net rig in muddy water is a good idea or not, but yeah, if you got black and blue, I'd probably throw that. Something a little darker. You got one? Yeah. You got one! There you go, first fish, boys. We're hooked up. Is it a big one? Yeah, a oh gosh, that's a good one. Bring him up in here, son. <laughs> oh my gosh! Look at that! There we go! Right off the rock. Three side. pounder. That was awesome. That did not take very long. Yeah, hold that sucker out. Look at that fish, son. Matt drew first blood in the new boat. Good job. Back in the water. So I'm starting off with a little finesse net rig. Just because the water is now, let's see, what's the water reading now? 49, and he's throwing, what are you throwing here? A little black and blue creature bait. So I'm thinking the water's pretty dirty. I don't know if they can even see this little finesse deal, but bringing that thing across the rocks. All right, I'm gonna throw the jig then. Gonna, I think I think the jig might the jig might work. I'm gonna throw a little green pumpkin action on here. Matches the water clarity again, but I put a little chartreuse on it. Let's see if this works. Dragging it along the rocks. So in the spring, for you, those of you guys that are new to fishing or you know looking for some tips, rocks hold heat. So anytime you're fishing, you know where it's warm all day, 70 degrees, 60 degrees, and then at the nights it's getting down in the 40s like it normally does. You know if you're fishing in the morning, especially like we are right now, fish the rocks because the rocks are what gonna it's gonna hold the heat. And then, uh, and then maybe in the afternoon, you know, the fish might not be on the rocks necessarily because the whole water is warm and everything else is warm. But they're going to hold against the rocks throughout the night and in the mornings because that's where the heat is. So always start on rocks. That's that's my tip of the day. Yeah, it actually isn't as dirty. It's weird. There's one, there's one. First cast, first cast, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yup, that's a good fish. First cast at the new spot. That's what's up, baby. Come here, woo! Yes, look at that, chatterbait fish. We just moved to the complete other side of the lake. Black and blue chatterbait, baby. Oh, pop her out of there. We just moved, that's a Nebraska brute. That's probably two and a half. Or so pounds, not quite as big as Matt's. Another good fish. You can tell how pale they are because how cold the water's been and how dirty it is. They don't have like the prominent lateral lines just yet, but a little pudgy little dude. All right, going back. Yes, first cast. I can't believe that. On the new spot, like I said, we just rolled up. First cast, black and blue chatterbait. Throwing against this little bridge here. You can't get under this bridge because there's eagles back there and they protect it for like half the season, which I'm not. I'm not. Not under the bridge. So I know you game and parks people are watching this right now. This is the only piece of structure really around here. I mean, there's trees, but 
there's this is just one little bridge here and I've caught a lot of fish off this bridge I've caught some pike off this bridge too um, bass and pike but that's a good sign on the black and blue chatterbait the water is actually way warmer here the water is 58 so it's 10 degrees warmer than the main lake this is the furthest northern the furthest north urn point of this lake I was telling you guys the north part is always going to be the warmest and where the rocks are which is this where the uh, this is pretty much as far north as you can get before you start trespassing feet oh what was that he ate it just sitting there like a jig dude what I don't think my GoPro was going what the heck I just got another one yes dude what on the bridge again this is insane my GoPro wasn't going I just stopped and started it look he's not even literally wasn't even hooked was not even hooked I was talking to Matt and I was explaining how, how this, this lake is super shallow right now. It's way down. And my chatterbait was sitting on the bottom and I felt it eat it like a jig. Literally just like a jig fish. Another, another bass. All right. Well, this is a really good sign. Really good sign. You go to the warm water, you go to the northern side of the lake, you start catching fish right away. I mean, we've been, Matt caught the fish right in the morning. We fished for another hour and didn't have another bite. All of a sudden we pull up here. That's crazy. You might want to put on a black and blue. So I was reeling it in like this and I was talking to Matt and I just let it sit on the bottom and I'm sitting here pointing and talking and also my line jumps and I set the hook like a jig. I've never in my life had that happen. Chatterbait just laying on the bottom, just, just hanging out, not moving. That's a fish. That's a fish. Oh gosh, oh gosh. All right, all right, we got a tree hanger here, folks. Yeah, yeah, that's a fish. Well, he's hanging from the tree. We're coming. Stay on there, buddy. I made a uh, pretty, pretty dangerous cast. I'm only throwing 17 pound line, which isn't the heaviest. Don't you do it now, don't you do it. He knows he's about to get in the boat. How do we get around this thing? What do we got going on here? Nope. There we go. Lay him right on my hoodie. Perfect. <laughs> Look at that. Flip fish. My line is completely shredded now, but I caught him way, 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 way in the back. And I kept telling myself, I was like, if I feel a bite, I'm pretty much screwed. And when I picked up, it was heavy. And I could feel him swimming around down there. I hooked him pretty dang good, though. Tore right, right in him. Look at that. That's a, that's a beautiful. We passed that one. This is our second pass down. And I pitched way. I mean, that, I mean they were, he was way, way, way in there. On the little beaver look at look at that bloody tail you know they're starting to get to doing the dirty when they got that bloody tail going on there beautiful all right see you later little buddy well, i took him for a fun ride snag there's one yo yeah. got him that's a good bass come on buddy yes dude that was like a foot away from the boat oh my gosh but again, he was tucked in up against the bank. We're starting to kind of dial these fish in. Look at that, another, look how, look at that. I've never seen that fin be bloody before. Look at that, I mean, look at the tail and the fin. That's crazy that there's, there, I mean, the, we ju it just snowed last week. Like, I mean, the water's 57, so I, know, I mean, I know they're thinking about spawning, but that's crazy. I mean, these look like full-blown pre-spawn bass. They're all beat up, they're bloody as heck. It's not a giant fish, but I'll take him. See, you, buddy. I'll show you what I'm throwing here. Just a little Texas rig. This is one of my favorite favorite ways to catch fish. Just flipping a little beaver, and a jig could work, but for some reason these creature baits. I don't know. I tend to catch. Personally, I think I catch more fish um, flipping these. I mean, this is what I caught the eight pounder on down in Texas, and uh, black and blue has been the color. Matt discovered that the black and blue and the little beavers. What's what's keyed in on? We casted in that that tree probably 10 times but I made one little cast as I was up against the bank getting my lure on hung and it was right up against the bank like like as close as you can get and it bit it and swam so these fish are they're pushed up so we got to make sure we're making really far pitches when we are actually casting in the trees <gasps> got him he came dude he ate it oh my gosh did you hear me gasp yeah. when he ate it I brought it over the tree branch look at that we're getting them dialed now, boys. It's over. Hitting the tur, 2024. I brought it over the branch and it chased it over the branch like a topwater fish. I, I mean, what's so weird is this is our second pass 
in this. We fished every, every tree that I've been catching these fish on. We've already fished once today with no luck. Second time around, they're smoking it. Same little deal. See, buddy? This is good stuff, folks. This morning, this morning, Matt caught a fish on this exact bait. On the rocks, though, which is totally different. And then we ran, again, to the very north side, found the warmest water. And, and actually, this water is cleaner than the main lake, which is weird because this is where the water kind of comes in. You would think it'd be muddy. But we really haven't had any rain. So it's clean water that's getting pumped in here. So it's going to be oxygenated and it's warmer. So you got clean, warm, oxygenated water. I mean, that's pretty much everything that a fish wants in its life. There's one. There's one. Yep, that's a good one. That's a good one. Woo! On the chatterbait. On these rocks. Look at, he choked it, dude. Like, just completely gone. The whole thing. See that? Black and blue chatterbait. Not a giant fish. I'll take him, though. We just moved over to these rocks. You guys see these rocks here? See the little dude? We just moved, and uh, Matt's back there. He's tying on a white chartreuse chatterbait. I'm throwing the black one, and the wind's... The wind's actually blowing into these rocks, so I figured it'd be good. And the water's warm. I mean, it's 50, was it 55 here? Just pretty warm. And this morning it was like 47. So it's obviously warming up. And with this wind kind of blowing into it, warm water, I'm thinking these fish are gonna hold on these rocks. Because again, this, these rocks hold heat. Pre-spawn, I love rocks. Once they're, you know, starting to think about bedding, that's when they go to that little bit, you know, softer bottom with the reeds and the grass and stuff like that. But pre-spawn, they love hanging around these rocks and just feeding up. And you are going to get hung up. You just snap your rod and she comes free. When they feed up for pre-spawn, they eat crawfish, bluegills, and crawfish and bluegills love hanging around these rocks. That's the key right now. A little black and blue chatterbait. One tip I've got for you guys about chatterbait fishing, since you guys know me and chatterbait are like this. It's, it's not like a, a foolproof tip, but you guys can see it's kind of worn off now, but I've got... It was colored Sharpie this morning and, and part of it's come off. One of my tips for especially black and blue, and I do it on green pumpkin as well, is I take a Sharpie and I color the blade. And uh, this one obviously needs a new a new coloring. Because, I mean, the last time I saw bluegill swimming, I didn't see it's, uh, something in front of its face shiny like that. I just think it's more natural, especially against pressured pressured fish. Not saying if you don't color it, you're not gonna catch fish. Cause I've caught, I mean, hundred, I've probably caught more fish on a shiny blade than a, than a black blade, but if you're fishing pressured waters, you know, you're not getting as many bites as you kind of expected. Color in that blade on a black and blue or green pumpkin. On a white or like a white and chartreuse, leave it because that gives a flash of like a shad, which is what you're trying to resemble. But when you're trying to resemble a bluegill with the black and blue or the green pumpkin, take a Sharpie, color that thing in, and uh, it might help you catch another fish. It just kind of depends, but that's just one thing I do. And then the other thing I do for the, for not the black and blue, but the green pumpkin is I, I'll dye the tail. A little bit chartreuse so like not this one but again on the green pumpkin i'll put a little chartreuse on the tail i just think that that just it shows the color plus it's got some scent to it those are some chatterbait tips for you guys but if you guys want again the rod the reel the line the lures that i'm using in today's videos i'm trying to do everything i can to link everything down below so just check the description check it out you guys want to pick up any of this gear well uh, that's the end of uh today's today's adventure it was good i mean it was actually a lot better than I had initially expected just because I knew the water temperatures were going to be in the 40s which uh, luckily we went way north and found 57 degree water which is like crazy I've never been to a lake where there's 12 degree difference in I mean a matter of like two miles down the lake I mean maybe not even two miles probably like a mile it's crazy I, I've never seen that before but hopefully you guys learned something from this video I'll, I'll do a quick recap for you one fish the northern side of the lake this isn't really apply that much to ponds but for lakes North side usually warms the first, is the, fir is the first to warm or something like that. That's tip, that's tip number one, okay? Tip number one is, is uh, fish the north side. Tip number two, just find the warmest water. water. So if, if the north side isn't the warmest, go find the warmest water because where the warmest water was where we caught all, most of our fish. And, uh, and, and that's, pretty much, that's pretty much how we did that today. Uh, what other tips? Chatterbait, color the blade. It, it, it may or may not work, but I should, you should try it, you know, whatever. Number seven tip of the day, don't, just because there's cold water, don't be afraid to throw a, a plastic or, or, or a bait that doesn't move, that does move a lot. Because like the bait Matt was throwing that initially caught that fish, I mean, it kicks like crazy. So 
I would have never guessed that that's what they would eat. I would think they were going to be eating like a beaver that doesn't have a lot of flapping appendages and they actually prefer the movement. So even if you're in 48, 49, 50 degree water, don't be afraid to throw baits that actually have a lot of action, which is go contradicts pretty much every pro and, and, and myself, pretty much every textbook rule of bass fishing that completely contradicts. So that's, that's another rule. I'm trying to think what else, what else did we learn today? That's pretty much it. Oh, oh, and they, uh, if you're flipping cover, uh, they were the, the fish are generally pretty tight to the bank uh, this time of year So when I was catching those fish it was making like a pitch in the middle the absolute middle of the actual bush that I was fishing and Kind of close up to the bank. That was that's pretty much what happened. That's that's essentially a recap of what happened today Hopefully you guys enjoy like I said if you did leave a like if you haven't subscribed Why haven't you go hit the subscribe button drop a comment down below tell me I just love I love seeing what you guys want to want to see next You know obviously I'm back in Nebraska. I'm probably gonna stay here for a little bit so I'll, I'll do some pond fishing, some, some creek fishing, what species you may go after in Nebraska, or maybe I'll travel, maybe I'll do something else, maybe go down south to, uh, to Kansas and catch some wipers or crappie or something like that. Anyways, I'm going to quit rambling, i got to get back. As you can tell, nice and cloudy, so the storm is moving in. We beat the storm, we caught fish, mission accomplished. Really do appreciate you guys watching. Remember, if you pick up $25 or more of flare gear, I will automatically enter you to win a fishing trip with me inside the 10-pounder. The gear will be linked down below and, uh, and all the gear that I use today. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.